Welcome. Welcome to Innovation Guelph Presents Toolkit Tuesday. Uh, I'm Vicki Campbell. I'm the Director of Community Growth here at Innovation Guelph, and I'm really excited uh, to be here with you today. I would like to first welcome our two friendly American Sign Language interpreters whose time today is graciously provided in kind by Sign Language Interpreting Associates of Ottawa, Krista and Samantha. So thank you for both joining us, uh, and thank you to SLEO. Um, while I'm at it, I would also like to thank our corporate sponsors, Ernst & Young, Reese Informatica, Invest in Guelph, and BDO. We're very grateful for their support. Before beginning, um, I would like to give recognition to the land that Guelph is on, and we do recognize that many others here today may be on different territory. So we invite and encourage each of you to give recognition to the land that you occupy today and every day. Um, and as we gather uh, here in Guelph for today's event, uh, we are reminded that Guelph is situated on treaty land that is steeped in rich Indigenous history and home to many First Nations, Inuit and Métis people today. As a organization here in Guelph, we do have a responsibility for the stewardship of the land on which we live and work. And today we acknowledge the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nations, of the Anishinaabeg peoples on whose traditional territory we're meeting. Today's webinar is called Going It Alone, Mental Health and Entrepreneurship with Denise Davis Gaines, the founder of Atlas Yoga Studio and School. Uh, just briefly, in case some of you are new to Innovation Guelph, uh, Innovation Guelph uh, is one of 17 regional innovation centers. We are here located in Ontario. Our programming actually services um, not only companies in the Guelph and Wellington region, uh, but we have programs that support companies all throughout Southern Ontario. We have a couple of national programs. So indeed, we have clients in BC all the way straight through to Nova Scotia um, and uh, all throughout the provinces and territories in between. Uh, we absolutely love working with clients that are innovative and scalable and have great um, starts to their business. We work with clients, um, helping them through many different stages of their business growth by providing um, workshops, um, webinars like this, mentorships, support programs, uh, and in some cases seed funding depending on the program. Um, we do a, an annual trade show called the Ontario Innovation Expo and make many valuable connections for the clients we work with that help them start and grow and thrive as they um, work on their business ventures. Um, but enough about us. You're here to hear from Denise, and uh, that's where we'll go next. Let me introduce a little bit about Denise. I think you will um, absolutely get a lot out of working um, through today's hour-long session with Denise. Uh, Denise um, is the founder, as I mentioned, of Atlas Yoga Studio and School. Uh, she has um, like two paths, uh, philosophy and dance movement intersected on the mat for Denise when she first met her yoga teacher. She experienced a lifelong passion. She's, uh, as a faculty member, Denise created innovative yoga, group exercise, physical fitness programming for 16 years at Wilfrid Laurier University in physical education and kinesiology, and for 11 years at Conestoga College in, um, with policemen, firemen, uh, paramedics, and corrections. She founded Atlas Yoga Studio School in 1999 and continues to be the director of education at this holistic and creative school of contemporary arts. She's been featured in different magazines. She writes for different publications and she's a sought after guest speaker. Um, I'm very happy to welcome Denise to today's Toolkit Tuesday and hand over the virtual screen uh, to Denise to teach all of you um, how to um, that you're not alone and that we can do this together. So Denise, over to you. Thank you, thank you, welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us today. And I'm kind of excited about the subject here going along, uh, mental health for entrepreneurs, being an entrepreneur and, and constantly working on my own mental health. And just because we're in the field and if I have any friends out there, feel free to drop uh, a, a, a note into the, the chat. Is we have, does this type of system have a chat box going? We can see the feed on that. Awesome. All right. So let us know where you are and, and uh, 
what field that you're in you know maybe tell us the name of your business or something just pop it in there so we can kind of see who we're talking to today i can't necessarily see all your faces so that can give me a little bit of idea of who's here and um where you are and what you're doing and why you might want to be doing this and it says that it says if i screen share i might stop you from sharing i think that's okay though right we're gonna absolutely go ahead all right. So I'm just going to share a little bit of music to start and I'll play it in the background as we're centering and help us to get in the mood for this presentation. All right. So wherever you are, if you can find your way into a comfortable seated position, you're running around the kitchen, maybe just come and take a minute with us. Or if you're, you've got 17 things going on in your desk, if you can take a couple of minutes and find a place to sit or stand, you could stand for this as well. And just get in your feet, wherever you are, find your feet on the ground. And if one's tucked underneath you, put both feet on the ground and moving down in the soles of the feet and just really begin to feel the ground underneath us. Then take a look around your space. Notice the things that uh, your comfort things, you know, I always have a stone or a shell nearby. Just notice the things that provide comfort for you in your space, the familiarity of your space, feeling where we are, feeling the sit bones moving down or the leg bones moving down. And then move up through the crown of the head and get a little taller in the seat and let the eyes be softly closed or softly open. And let's start to become aware of the breath. And take one or two deep, full breaths, maybe even a heavy sigh or two, and just land right here, right now. The music that's playing in the background is Theta Waves. I'm going to give you links to everything we do, and I'm happy to share our PowerPoint presentation that's got links to the music we're going to use today. So just being here, feeling the feet, and imagine breathing through the soles of the feet. Take a couple of deep breaths as if you could take your breath right from the soles of the feet up into your body and exhale, landing right here, right now. We know how busy everyone's day is and how hard it is to take a little time to take care of ourselves. So my hope and my wish for you today is that you come away with some tools to help us to resource when things get challenging and ideas about what it could look like, what asking for help, asking for community, and finding resources might look for look like today. I'm just gonna start the slide sharing and open up the slides and let they go home my, my notes so I can know what I'm supposed to be sharing. Right? Okay of the screen it should be all set up if i've done this right it's going to look awesome yes there we go all right and we are i am coming to you as well from the my notes here i'm oh, sorry doing exactly what i said i wouldn't do is put notes on top of my screen sharing right oh man stress right there's stress right there I just want to acknowledge that I'm also on the Haldeman track that includes 10 kilometers on either side of the Grand River. And we want to honor the history and legacy of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee and the uh, Adirondack people. And we offer our gratitude to the indigenous peoples who care for and take uh, and, and to pioneer and, and share the lands in which we live, learn, teach, and prosper. And um, that is important to me as well. I have native heritage on both sides of my family. And that's really important to me to begin to, for us all to understand where we are. And without any more ado, let's get into the nitty gritties of this, this presentation. Canadian Mental Health Association um, published a study recently from, it was done in 2022, a study called Going Along. And the I'll make sure that the link goes into the chat box for that study in case you're interested in uh, reading a little bit more about the study. I'll make sure that we get that there. There it is in the chat box. And in the study, rolling down all the statistics, we're looking at more than 60% 
of the businesses in Canada are small businesses. And more than 50% of those businesses are micro businesses. I would call my business a micro business, but it doesn't mean it's any less stressful than a small business or medium-sized business or a large business. And what the statistics are saying is actually micro businesses, anyone, any business that's making less than 2 million is where they're seeing the largest challenges in mental health for entrepreneurs. So entrepreneurship can be this very sexy, lead your own on this agenda, book your time, come and go when you please, and do something that you're passionate about. But it also comes hand in hand with some mental health challenges. And in this study that they, they discovered that we are identifying as having mental health challenges at about 70% of us that are out there as entrepreneurs, but only 20% are putting their hand up and getting help. And even less than that are getting professional help. So it's most people who identify as having a mental health issue like stress, anxiety, management, they, it comes from things like our cash flow, our ability to make deadlines, hiring, things like this are the bigger stressors for entrepreneurs, work-life balance. And we'll talk a lot more about that in a little while, but these are some of the big stressors. And most entrepreneurs identify as being able to manage it themselves. Isn't that funny? We also manage our accounting and we manage our, our the bookkeeping and the accounting and we manage our marketing, we manage our advertising, we manage all of these hats that we wear. It's really difficult to be an expert in everything. And it doesn't mean like I'm at school, I did two years of accounting as part of a communications degree in fashion, but it doesn't mean that that's my area of expertise. And I definitely have less stress when I hire a professional to do those things. So I think it comes down to the same thing as creating community where we balance our mental health as well as all of the other hats that we wear in our businesses is, a, is an important piece of this research. So we'll probably quote some of the stats from this research as we go through this session together. Uh, Hey, Denise. Yes. Can I just jump in and ask a favor? We're yes. having some feedback that the music in the background is almost making your voice a little choppy. Can we turn off the music while you present? How's that? Is that better? That music? Yep, that music gone. Yes. That's better. That's yep. better. So Thank that's you. Just me I just forgot to turn it off. I just meant to have it on for a minute while we grounded. And uh, thank you so much, Mickey. Appreciate that. And thanks for the feedback. Much better. Awesome, Barbara. Thank you. All righty. And so moving along here, we have, um, yes. So as entrepreneurs, like everybody else, we all have a very specific bioavailable lifespan. And that keeps expanding with modern science and technology. You know, there was a time when our lifespan in you know, not so distant past might have been 60 to 80 would have been a, um, a, a reasonable lifespan. And that expanded to thinking that we had at least 120 years. And the most recent research says we've got between 100 and 150 years in terms of our bioavailable lifespan. Everything that we do to our bodies, our minds, our spirits, our emotional self is either expanding that bioavailable lifespan or shortening. And my hope is today we're gonna to have some tools to help us extend that bioavailable lifespan. Because stress, anxiety, depression, these are some of the leading causes of disease that is not genetic, right? Our heart disease, uh, respiratory disorders, uh, mental disorders, cancer, things like this. These are the stressors that are shortening our bioavailable lifespan. Uh, a few years back, I was asked to work with PricewaterhouseCoopers at a project at Langdon Hall. They discovered uh, through some research, and this is a while back now, they discovered that their senior partners were all dying at the age of retirement. Between 60 and 65, they were dying or becoming completely incapacitated. So they were leading a very stressful life to get to be their top performers in their companies and top salespeople, top managers, their senior partners. And they found that 
they wanted to do something about it. So they created a program and everyone who got to a certain level in the company got to go to Langdon Hall and they had a medical doctor, a psychologist, they had a uh, fitness professionals doing fitness training, nurses, doctors, psychologists, psychiatrists, yoga teachers, Qigong, dance. There was about 25 professionals from various aspects of health and wellness. And their senior partners were evaluated. Programs were created for them in fitness, wellness, uh, mindfulness, meditation. And what's happened over the 20 years since they started their program is that they have changed the average lifespan from 67 was kind of an average age of their partners to um, die, right, to 71.5. So over the last 10 years that, that they have managed to change that by simply educating the partners about their options in fitness and wellness and getting them on a track to measure, maintain, and, and follow their factors of health heart rate, blood pressure, skin tension, respiratory rate, weight, daily physical activity, intake of water, nutrients, all this sort of thing, looking at diet. So as entrepreneurs, it's like, how can we find a way to uh, take a microcosm or take a page out of PricewaterhouseCoopers book and say, hey, we don't have to be a massive company. We can be a small micro business and we can begin to create our own plan to move forward in a way that tracks our fitness and wellness, that takes care of the self-care component of having a healthy lifestyle. And even though most entrepreneurs are responded to the questionnaire saying that, that they took care of themselves by taking vacations and doing self-care, there really wasn't a lot of identification about what self-care looked like. And I don't know if uh, if you could put in the chat box what you think self-care is for you. Like what is self-care for, for you right now in your life? Everyone who's here and our team could answer this too if they're, they're not busy doing other stuff, right? Like, you know, it gets, what is self-care? And what does it mean for you? I'm looking at the chat box. I'm not seeing anybody responding yet. I know there's at least 26 people out there. Right? 26 people, talk to me. Tell me what is self-care? Daily yoga, journal, recap in the evening, taking time to breathe and think, yoga, downtown bikes, right? For me, I see self care anything that nourishes my soul and energy, right? Rowan, what is that? What is What nourishes your soul and your energy? Right? Christy McDonald, a bath. Yeah, absolutely. Only you got to clean the bath first, right? But the bath's got to be clean. Setting aside time for myself without interruptions, yoga, active outside, long bath, meditation, staying calm and sane. All right, exercise, devotion, self-care. These are some great ideas. The challenge is to actually do them. So now everyone who identified all these awesome things that we could be doing, I'll put in the, put in the uh, chat box how often you actually do them. Say just average out of seven days a week, how many days are you actually making time? Is it one, two, three, five, seven days a week? So again, it helps me to know who I'm talking to. Don't want to preach to the choir, right? And one or two times a month, once a day, walks in the woods with my dog. Oh, dogs are amazing. They actually demand that we take care of ourselves because we got to take care of them, right? And children. Yoga five days a week, journaling three times a week. Nice. Every day, once a, once a, one day a week, zero to two times a week, maybe. Awesome. This is great. And this is average for all of us. The occasional person is doing a really great job and trying to find something daily or weekly to take care of ourselves. And that be our goal is to move towards a place where we're doing something. And this kind of rule of thumb was given to me a long time ago. And again, no one's looking for perfection, but the idea that if you give yourself an hour a day, a day a week, a weekend a month, and taking off two or three weeks a year for retreat is a way to stay more healthy than the average person out there. And it's, it's a tangible, realistic type of a goal, a thing that you can get your mind around, right? Oh, someone's providing innovative tennis instructions, 10 hours a week. Nice. That sounds like fun. That's a, I want to do that too. 
cold plunge in Georgian Bay two to three times a week. Fantastic. Amazing for our nervous system, right? I love the cold plunge. And where most of us are not doing something for ourselves often enough. What I'm really happy to see that there's not on the list, there isn't a glass of wine at the end of the day. It might be self-care too, right? Or, you know, taking a vacation. No one mentioned vacations, taking a day off, a day where you don't answer any emails, a day away from technology, right? Getting away from our cell phones, our computers, our devices, our planner, right? Having a full day to rest and strategies to plan for that. All right. So easy to talk about, harder to do. I get it. It's hard. I, when COVID happened, I had a full-time in-person yoga studio and we pivoted really quickly to become a online digital business. And I didn't know how to do that. It was something I had to learn. So it's at my desk, you know, at five o'clock in the morning and oftentimes until 11, 12, one, two o'clock in the morning, or just stayed up all night trying to meet deadlines, figure out how things worked. Oh my, I don't know if anybody can relate to this. Give me a thumbs up if you can relate to this. You can do some emojis there, right? And uh, tell me about who had, you know, a transformation over the last couple of years that interfered with our regular way of taking care of ourselves. I know no one's responding. I don't know if you're listening, you're out there. Hello, hello. Earth to folks, folks. Anyway, all right. So um, there's a note here that you can uh, book a corporate wellness evaluation with us. So if your company needs a little support, whether it's one person, which lots of small business or, or just one person, you can work a corporate wellness. We're going to work in working in corporate wellness for over 40 years. My first corporate client was, uh, I think it was the Petro Canada in Toronto was in Dominion Securities. I bet even back in the 80s and 90s, they had corporate fitness centers, and they were all about the um, and making sure that employees had a wellness and health program. And that's an important thing for us as entrepreneurs, not just our employees. And it's one of the things that the studies pointed out as well, that as entrepreneurs, we're often really great at making sure we have a great employee or team health and wellness program, but we don't always take advantage of it ourselves. And so that's a little bit about what we're going to do next is talk a little bit about what we can do. Um, getting creative when you work from home, your home is the business and open to the public. That's my biggest challenge. Yeah, Christy, I, I hear you. I'm, I've been working from home as well and, and have had um, some interesting challenges with that, right? Working from home. All right. So what can we do if we can't, get to the ski hill we can't get to georgian bay for the ice plunge we can't necessarily get to even our yoga class or a fitness class or the trail as often as we might like to there are some things that we can do and what we can do is begin to pay attention to some of the warning signs that stress is building up and can anyone like, tell me some of the signs that they find? Like for me, I know stress is building up when I haven't stood up from my desk in, in, in an hour, I, let alone four or five hours. Uh, we know if we're sitting for four or five hours that there's going to become a problem, right? It's not good for our back. Immediately, the hamstrings start to lengthen. The abdominal muscles shorten. It pulls the pelvis out of alignment when we sit for long periods of time. Uh, so there's some early warning signs. If I don't want to go outside, it's a really big warning sign for me that I have to get outside. I don't know. What are your early warning signs? Anybody else find that there's some specific things that they know something's up? Short fuse, sleeping poorly, absolutely snapping at people, difficulty concentrating, spinning thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. I know I was talking to my kid last night, walking him through uh, some mindfulness stuff because He's had two or three nights of, of stress before a big event that was happening today. And it's it. these are some of the things that come up for us. And if we're not careful, they lead to even more challenging things like on Medicaid, our blood pressure starts to go up or down. We eat too much or not enough as a reason to take a break. 
neck and shoulder pain. Oh man, right? From mostly from our devices, you're sitting too long, it's going to end up in neck and shoulder pain, right? And also stress lands in the neck and the shoulders as energetically, it makes sense. All right. So right now, let's take a minute to just drop in again and drop into the feet one more time and begin to notice how you're feeling right now. As I, just, I'm gonna, I tend to close my eyes, but some people are not comfortable with their eyes closed and you don't have to. Some of us have a hard time with visualization, right? So just closing your eyes or leaving them open. And let's begin to find our breath. Feel the soles of the feet on the ground again. Maybe you can feel your hands on your knees or on a firm surface. Maybe they're on your desk or by your sides. I'm really feeling, notice if you're doing something other than this, if you're trying to get other tasks done while you listen to this chat today, maybe stop for just a minute so you can plug in and begin to notice any sensations in the body. And my friends who talk about neck and shoulder pain, do you have some chronic stuff like just checking in and feeling, you know, if I scan my body, I can feel something, a little bit something in my right hip. You can feel, maybe you can feel your shoulders. Maybe you can feel a band of tension sometimes around the forehead. Let's get tall through the crown of the head. Allow the breath to become a little bit deeper, a little bit fuller. That's it. Now, as you scan the body from the top of the head down to the tips of the toes, notice if there's any places that are painful tight, pulling in, maybe there's chronic places where you have tension, maybe you just feel tired because you haven't been sleeping well. Right. Wherever you feel it, maybe that's something that you're feeling in your head. Where do you feel tired in your body? It's your eyes, your jaw, wherever it is. Imagine you could breathe into that space and exhale from that place. My friend, Dr. Ruby Gibson, she calls this somatic archaeology. It's kind of digging in to discover what we're holding on to and what we might be able to let go of. And it's part of a indigenous medicine wheel practice of sensing, feeling, and noticing. And the medicine wheel is round for a reason. It's a cycle around and around. We can get busy and forget to check in with the body and the breath. And it just takes a minute to come back. Take a couple more deep breaths. Maybe there's another play calling your attention. You notice that I can feel my right hand's colder than my left hand right now, just because of how I was keying on my computer, I think. But I could breathe into my right hand and warm it up a little bit. That's it. The breath is incredible. Uh, one of the most common reasons for anxiety and depression is under breathing. So if we've been at our computer, just sitting up tall where there's room for a deep breath or standing up, getting grounded and taking a deep breath can begin to allow us to tap into and use the full potential of our apparatus of breathing which moves the intercostal muscles between the ribs, which stimulates the endocrine system. So the hormones start to move and the hormones are the chemical communication system in our body. So when we start to take deep full breaths and we start to move breath or prana, we call it in, in yoga and the energy through the body, we start to stimulate our parasympathetic nervous system the rest and digest system. And if we don't stimulate the parasympathetic nervous system before we eat, say, it's really difficult to get the most nutrients from our food. You might think the same before you go into a meeting, before you go home. Taking time to just decompress, find your breath, resource with the feet on the ground, 
breathe into any aches and pains in the body. Some people will find that, that just this exercise alone can start to shift their pain and their stress levels. Lowers the heart rate, lowers the respiratory rate, lowers tension at the skin, and can lead to an experience of noticing and sensing things that are connected, our feelings. I, someone mentioned, you know, having a short fuse. Generally, we have a short fuse because we haven't resourced ourselves. So it's really difficult to be a resource for someone else. So when something comes up, I, there can be a, a jump to anger, frustration, irritation. But when we stop and take some breath, give ourselves time to think about it, interpret the information that's coming towards us, interpret the information in our body, and then reconcile that with what we know about what's true and real, what's going on around us. And it means coming back to this over and over again. All right, give the body a little shake. It'll shake out. Have you been sitting for a while? It'll shake out the arms. That's it. Shake it up. Give a little tap on the feet, feeling and sensing. Let's rub our hands together and wipe off the face. Get rid of some of the tension. Oh, yeah. And just notice if it's shifted anything for you to just drop in and pay attention to what's going on with you. All right. So. I'm going to play another piece of music and I'll try to keep it short. I'll try to remember this time to turn it off. So it's a piece of music called Resilience. And that's really what we're working towards is having resilience. This is um, a piece by Rising Up Lecha, um, Castanea. So I'm going to play this for one minute. You can hear it. Take some deep breaths. Yeah, and so some of you will be able to relax with my voice and some folks would do better with a piece of music. Yeah, so just sit back, maybe lean back in your chair for a moment. Give yourself time to really feel this piece of music. Denise, we can't hear it very clearly. Are you sharing sound? Yeah. I'll just make sure and double check. There we go. These times are poignant. The winds have shifted. It's all we can do to stay uplifted. Pipelines through backyards, wolves howling out front. Yeah, I got my crew, but truth is what I want. Realigning on point, power to the peaceful, prayers to the water. And so again, music is a tool that I find works really well for me. And finding pieces of music that speak to certain moods or but we call it bhava it's a a mood yeah, that's created by specific music or practices that we do mindfulness practices that help us to recenter and resource again and so let's get rid of music so an early morning practice may not be everybody's cup of tea but oftentimes it's the only time when entrepreneurs can manage stress and anxiety and start to build resilience. And most entrepreneurs that I speak to and have worked with, it's the early morning practice that is the game changer. And it may not prevent completely um, unpleasant and difficult situations from arising at work or in our business. And all the flexibility in the world is not going to solve our cash flow problems, right? Like this will, will not necessarily change the cash flow problem, but it can help us to tackle them with a clear head, a calm mind, and a determined soul. And, and if you're still not convinced about how energy and attention is connected, let's do one more exercise here. If you wouldn't mind to stand up, 
I'm going to stay seated so I can read my notes to you. But if you don't mind to stand up and give your body a shake out, uh, if you shake out your arms and just stand up tall. And this exercise, if you have unmedicated high blood pressure or you're pregnant, I'll give you some modifications as we go through it. It really doesn't take very long at all. But let's take a deep breath up. Inhale the hands up. Exhale the hands down by the sides. Roll the shoulders back a little bit. Create a little warmth in the shoulders. Right? And on the next breath, Let's take a deep breath and take our hands up overhead again. And if you have a shoulder injury, you could have your arms a little wider or unmedicated high blood pressure or pregnancy, the arms could be wide. But if you can, hold them above the head. That's it. And we're just going to hold our hands up here for a couple of minutes. I promise no one's arms ever fell off doing this exercise. And our hope is that you can actually feel kinesthetically how, where your energy goes, your attention goes, and how. Your thinking affects uh, our state of mind our, and our physiological perception of our strength, ability to concentrate. So what we think we become you know, might be one of the questions as well. So holding it here, just to imagine that it's nice and easy and hold up. Your arms are starting to get tired already. Of course, bring them down, but try to go straight back up if you're able to, right? Or hold them in that modified position. Holding them up here now, remember a time when you had the best birthday ever, best birthday ever, you know, you, that it was, you know, you got exactly what you wanted for your birthday, or everybody came or everyone said happy birthday on Facebook, or something like that. And if you've only ever had terrible birthdays, maybe remember the best sex ever or something more fun like that even. And so just something really positive and notice how it feels to hold your hands up while you're remembering something really positive. Positive, positive, positive. Best day in business ever. Maybe you won an award or made your first dollar. All, right? All the little things that make you feel fabulous, holding them up there. And now as you continue to hold the hands up, remember the worst birthday ever. Worst birthday ever. Maybe you got the ugly red purse for your birthday. Or maybe all your birthdays were awesome. Remember when the dog died? Did I actually say that? That's terrible. I know, it's terrible. Or Grandma, remember something hard. Right? Remember something that's maybe this week you had hard stuff. Going back there for just a moment and start to feel how that changes your ability to hold your arms up. Remembering how hard it was, uh, whether it was just something small and negative or something big and negative, right? One of those days when you're looking at your balance, wondering if you're going to make payroll at the end of the month, feel it in your shoulders right now, feel it. I don't know about anybody else. I can feel the burning. All right. And then switch it really quickly and imagine someone else holding up. Innovation Guelph is holding our hands up at the top and they're hanging out. Mickey and Adelaide's got one hand each and they're holding my hands up and making it effortless. They're helping me. Just imagine all the angels and divine beings up there or your mom or someone else that you really can count on hold the hands up there and feel the difference and then very quickly bring the arms down by your sides let them come down feel the arms feel the energy moving and bring all of your attention into your right arm right arm right arm feel your right arm feel energy flowing over into your right arm right arm right arm and then quickly shift all of the attention and the energy over into your left arm left arm left arm left arm feel the sensations in the left arm left hand that's it and then relax shake it out and have a seat again or come back to whatever position is comfortable for you. And like put some notes in the chat box about how that was for you, right? Could you feel the difference in a positive thought and a negative thought with the arms overhead? Could you feel the difference? And could you feel how when you just take your attention into one hand and the other hand? Anyone want to talk about that experience? I found that doing this with multiple groups that yes, we've got a yes. Saja, Saja, I'm not sure if I'm saying your name right, but Saja yeah, is saying yes, yeah, she could feel it. And I've found that like at least eight out of 10 people can feel this, the kinesthetic feeling of what it feels like when we have a positive thought versus a negative thought. And positive thinking is not going to fix everything, but it can sure make it easier to manage it. Remembering that our thoughts become our biology as much as anything else that is going on in our life. And if we can shift our thought process, we can really shift how we feel about our businesses, our families, our lives, and our own self and our own body and our own wellness, right? 
So there's a couple other things, but we're kind of moving through time. I'm going to keep moving here. The next one is like talking about balance and you can feel the balance of work life and the microcosm of what comes up when we're working on ourselves is really a, a, a mirror image of the microcosm of our life. Like if we're not giving ourselves time for those self-care things, as everyone identified, they know what self-care looks like for themselves. But the fact that we're not always given that we're giving ourselves that once or twice a month or and folks who are doing this daily awesome thank you like this is what we're here for is to keep encouraging each other to keep doing that we have these conversations so that we're reminded of why we keep coming together to find the balance in mind body spirit and emotion and it, it aids in expanding the outlook our outlook and this quote happens to come from, you know, someone that's talking about employees and management. Well, as an entrepreneur, we're often the business owner, the manager, and the employees, right? And we can become more loving and compassionate towards the requirements of our partners, our colleagues, and the people that we have to work with in our families and our clients when we improve our general well-being and it's known to reduce absenteeism so we're going to get less sick less often and we're going to have to take time away from our business less often if we find a routine a way of accessing self-care on a regular basis and in the study they talked about a couple of the biggest challenges to accessing self-care is um, the cost the cost of self-care. It can be incredibly expensive to take care of ourselves. And there is uh, there's a hidden dark side to being an entrepreneur and it can wreak havoc on our mental health. It's like, we don't know what goes on with another person unless they choose to tell us. We can't know the struggles that another person is going through. And we, we do know that as entrepreneurs, the challenges that we, that we face are, are real. They're, they're affecting our health on a daily basis. And there's been studies and there's more help coming for women in business. There's more help coming for our BIPOC communities. There's more help coming, but it often is, is coming in the form of education about our businesses, but not necessarily education about how to take care of ourselves in these businesses and have a healthy, well lifestyle while we're building a business. Oftentimes we're building a business at the cost of our health and the cost of our family life, the cost of our ongoing well being. And if we're not making time, it's that really old quote, right? Is, uh, uh, do we want to live to work or work to live? And that really sums up what happens for entrepreneurs. Oftentimes, we start with a passion business and our passion is strong and we want to make a difference. Our businesses are social enterprise oriented frequently as small businesses. We want to make a difference in our communities and we stop allowing that choice to make a difference for us. And it, we have to prioritize our own health, find our morning routine that works, find our evening routine that works. If you're really adamant that you don't want to be a morning person, then don't fight over the morning thing. It doesn't mean that you're going to not be successful. Just find an evening or an afternoon. You know, you are an entrepreneur. Make up your schedule so that there is time in it to breathe. Remember, under-breathing, leading cause of anxiety and depression. Leading cause, under-breathing, right? Make time to relax, right? So instead of having a tea and working, sit back. Have a tea and go outside and have it. Stand outside. We've got winter. Great. Cold weather is good for us. Take your tea outside and sit on the front porch, right? Or set up your life so that there's moments where you have time to relax. Okay. And so moving through this, we want to do things that help us to find the resources that can help you to make lasting change. And it's hard to do alone. You don't have to do it alone. There's companies like ours. I'm sure there's companies that are in innovation Guelph. So I'm not the only one. This is not just about us, but at Atlas Studio, we offer live online classes. So there's no reason why anyone can't do it. We've got 
even chair classes that are not just for disabled, but because people have limited space or time, they can do it at their desk, they can do it um, in their kitchen, they can do it in, in any anywhere. We have uh, classes going on in person in the Cambridge Kitchener Waterloo area. We can do classes at your place of business or ours in the in-person experiences. And we can set up corporate wellness programs, even if your corporation is one person, right? Or if it's a hundred or 400 people. We've, I've worked with companies as big, like as big as Toyota and as, as small as a, a single individual entrepreneur uh, who is looking to make some changes, right? And there's lots of different things out there. It's not just yoga, yoga, meditation, and mindfulness, but there's so many different types of yoga, different types of meditation, and different types of just somatic sensing experiences. There is a ton of mental health. If these kind of things that we're talking about today are not adequate to your needs, I, I love that too, Barbara. Walking meetings, let's meet and move. I, that is one of my absolute best techniques to get clients going. I say, let's, let's walk and set our agenda while we're walking, right? And there's so many different types of, of movement out there, right? Restorative yoga, it's, it's like, we call it the pajama party of the week, right? And vinyasa yoga, for those friends out there who like it hot and sweaty, vinyasa yoga is gonna be a challenging style of yoga. You can run, you can bike, you can paddle, you can row, anything at all to get your heart rate up every day. Walking is one of the best ways you can do that. Vinyasa yoga is another. There's relaxing meditations. You can listen to audios. You can listen to videos. You can do your own meditation. Getting outside to do that four seasons. Biophilia effect. We are made of the same thing as plants and animals. And I know most of you know this, but we come together to remind each other, right? Have fun at the office. Look at this guy. He is having fun. He's been doing his yoga. And it looks like the connection is not wanting to go. He actually slides across the room in his chair there and get the team together. If you're a team of one or two or five or seven, I get teams together to do challenges in your workspace so that you challenge each other to get your steps in. This was, um, I think the first time I experienced this was at the, the bus station in St. John's, Newfoundland. I lived there for a few years and I worked at the bus station and we would challenge each other uh, to bring healthy lunches and we, we would all get on the scale together and check out our weight. Not that that necessarily is the best measurement, but it's a measurement, right? Any kind of challenging. There's lots of somatic sense. You don't like yoga. You don't like med meditation, just some good guided awareness of being in your body, feeling and coming back to resource, resource the space around us. I, I can tell you can read more about Atlas Yoga Studio in school. This is just some notes about, about us when we're Getting low on time, I've got a couple more things I want to share with you, and I would like to skip through this. And we're going to do a 40-day challenge with the studio. It can be online or in person, and that's going to start March 19th. So if you're the kind of person who needs a little push and unity, you can make time for uh, the 40-day challenge that's coming up. There's a link to us in this so that if you just click on this uh, starts March 19th, it'll take you to the website where that is, and you find a class. A course, a teacher, find someone that you can relate to, to work with. Um, these are pictures of some of the beautiful souls in our business, some of our yoga teachers, right? And we're going to leave you guys with a free three-month unlimited live online yoga class at the end of this session so that you can, and yes, you're going to have the slide deck and I'm happy to also answer questions. We got a couple of minutes left to answer some questions. And so if you have specific questions, I know there was a couple Mickey, that were sent to me. Do we want to address those questions first? Hi, Denise. Yeah, absolutely. I have some questions here that were submitted with registration. So one of them being in a bit of, bit of context here. The law of attraction states that you become or are drawn to what you think about most. Many entrepreneurs, especially in earlier stages of growth, spend most of their time focused on firefighting initiatives and surviving each day. Do you have any guidelines to help use the law of attraction to help mitigate mental health issues? All right. So if the, the person who asked this question happens to be here, my first question was what industry, right? Like how to overcome cynicism about the industry, the industry of yoga or mindfulness or about uh, positive affirmation law of attraction, that industry. Um, 
that that's that's my first question and i want us to remember that ideas like the law of attraction they're just that they're ideas it's a philosophical idea it's an idea about how the universe works right so the word exploit gives me a little bit of hesitation as i'm not sure i want to exploit anything but i want to i want to invite into my own subconscious my own mind positive affirmations and a a way to be in the world that creates less stress and we can mitigate our mental health issues by spending a little time each day in quiet meditation and time to visualize our life in its manifest form as a peaceful easy feeling and that allowing what it is that we do want to manifest to come easily and effortlessly towards us and when we say that I, a cynicism about that is generally someone who's stuck in negative mind and if we make time for breathing exercise movement being outside all of those things it tends to shift the mind to where it wants to be in a more positive frame and so it's hard to be in a positive frame of mind and be less cynical if we're not doing the things to get us to that place so it's kind of a catch-22 you can start telling the truth in advance saying I'm awesome. I feel really good. And when you tell yourself you're awesome and you feel really good, you're more likely to get outside for a walk and do your yoga practice and want to get up and have a glass of water before your cup of coffee or something like that in the morning. But if you're being critical of self of like, oh, nothing works. My hormones are crazy. That negativity is a cycle that pulls you down. And it, it's we can't be our best when we stay in that negative cycle as my my take on that i hope that i'm addressing it I, and i also think it's important to have a little time in retreat reflection and planning where you can create space to accomplish our wildest dreams and do it in a way that serves our purpose our dharma is what we refer to it in yoga and that life purpose and for those around us our families our communities our business teams you know being part of innovation wealth if i can be positive and be excited about what comes from that relationship I could be negative. And if there's anything negative, it's because I didn't take advantage of the things that are available to me. That's, it's me. I'm the monster at the end of the book. Does anybody else love that book? Elmo? you got to look it up. The Elmo book, I'm the monster at the end of the book. It's an awesome book. I'm the monster at the end of the book. So when it comes to the philosophy of, you know, the and um, I think part of the other part of that question was like, you know, the Stephen Covey's habits of Highly effective people are proactive, begin with the end of mind, do first things first. They're they're great things. I think that if we, it's not necessarily that we're not being proactive. It's shifting our consciousness. And sometimes we have to do things to shift the consciousness out of negative mind, to get into positive mind, to be able to even be proactive in our own life, right? I hope that kind of addresses that question, right? I'm seeing, question? yes, the question just came in uh, through the Q&A here saying, you said if you don't like yoga, there are other ways. Oh, Any so examples many. of what other ways are available? So many. I, I think there are as many different ways to do this as there are people out there. And some no, some people are never, ever going to want to ever walk into a yoga class ever. But you can still do some breathing exercises. It doesn't really matter what you call those or what what um, school of thinking that they come out of. There are breathing exercises in Qigong. There's breathing exercises in um, in mindfulness practices. There are breathing exercises in, that come out of the Hokomi method, which comes out of a Hawaiian method of, uh, of breath, breath work. There's, um, there's rolfing, there's so many, and I'm happy to provide more resources on you know places where you can go and find more information on other tools that are out there but starting with the breath and then adding movement you know walking and if you can't walk right rolling getting outside right so if you're not able to walk but get you can find a way to get outside and being outside at like my teachers would tell me that you need to be outside two hours a day i'm excited for you if you make time for 20 minutes 20 minutes can make a big difference of being outside for 20 minutes every day can change. You're getting more oxygen. You're getting uh, more daylight. I, if we're plants and animals, like what would happen to your house plant if you kept it indoors away from the windows all day, every day, it would not thrive. 
and water. Water is huge. Breathing, getting outside, water. These are the tools. Right? You come to yoga to be reminded of those tools, right? And moving your body. You can go to a gym. If you don't like gyms, you can watch a video. They hate videos. You can get a book on the subject, read the book and do the, the activities in the book. Dancing, one of my personal favorite ways for cardiovascular stress relief, put on your favorite music and dance around your kitchen or wheel around your kitchen or whatever it is. My friend, um, Mary, who's a, a, a yoga trainer out, out West, she was in a major ski accident and became a quadriplegic. And over several years, she mentally practiced Ashtanga yoga for two hours every day, regained the use of her arms and has had got back many neurological functions after many, many years. I told her she'd never, ever be able to use her hands again. And, um, and she now uses her hands from just doing it mentally. So even the mental break you now for me, I'll grab a cup of, of tea, smell it, taste it. All of these techniques come from, from our ancestors from all cultures, have techniques that help us to resource, help us to get grounded and help us to manage stress in our lives, right? For some people, it's religion. Go to church on Sunday if that's your thing. That's a really great way to, to pray every day. Prayer is massive. There's so much I want. I could talk forever, Nikki knows. I could keep talking. I'm ta telling you about some of the research around fertility and prayer. Phenomenal, right? There's so much out there. So yes, any other questions we want to get to as well? Or is that everything? Well, just for sake of time, I think I'm going to say thank you. But if anybody does have any burning questions and want to wait around, we can extend the call for about 10 minutes. Um, however, I do want to let the people go who need to go because we did say it's a 60 minute call today. So thank you, Denise. And thank you to our sponsors, of course. Uh, and to our lovely interpreters for the, the, the wonderful session today. I really appreciate everybody's time uh, and dedication to the call. Um, we've dropped a couple of links into the chat. One is for feedback. So tell us about how much you enjoyed this session or how you like the series in general. If you have any ideas, let us know what you would like to see on one of these Toolkit Tuesday webinars. Um, in addition, we dropped the link to our um, Innovation Guelph per Partner page, and that's a lot of P's, um, and it is where you can find the um, the form you fill out to get access to the three months free of using the Atlas uh, Yoga Studio School. Um, Denise has also dropped her information for contact purposes and her website information below. So lots of things for you to look at. All in all, we will be following up with you by the end of the week with a copy of this, and um, all of this information will be included as well. Uh, so lots of things coming at you in the next week. But we want to say thank you very, very much for coming today. Um, again, if a couple of you want to stick around, we'll stick around for a couple extra minutes. But uh, thank you. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and take some of these practices into your life. All the best. Thank you, everybody. All right. So I think we have a few people sticking around. Um, okay. and, and we can certainly um, get to the questions that are in the chat. Um, Absolutely. A question did pop in um, asking you, Denise, what is the biggest thing you notice so you know you need more self-care in your routine? I would say, I, I think it's going to be in, uh, different for different individuals. That's the most important thing to, to be clear about. Your own triggers and your own awarenesses are yours, and no one should make less of those. But for, for me, I know if I don't want to go outside, if I don't want to go outside, I know I've been inside too much and that I, I immediately put on my shoes and go outside. I know that if I haven't stood up, I love, I, I don't have it on right this second, but I usually wear my eye watch and it's got, it tells you how often you stood up. We want to be able to stand up at least once an hour every day. If we don't, it's a really good indicator 
that we're not getting enough movement in our day. And when you start losing interest in doing things with your family, when you start saying no to uh, social events and prioritizing work over all social events, no, I can't do that, I've got to work. No, I can't do that, I've got to work. No, I can't do that, I've got a deadline. It's like, uh-oh, something's wrong. Stop, it can all wait. It can all wait until you've made time for family, friends, for yourself. And the most successful people that I've studied and the most successful people I've worked with try to start their day with something because the rest of the day, it's too easy. When we care about our business and we care about our work and we care about the people we work with, it is so easy to prioritize their needs over your own. And I'll tell you another, another trick that I learned a long time ago. My mom said to me one time, Denise, she was at my house and I was getting the kids ready and we were going to do something after I took the kids to school and everybody's racing around, everybody's complaining and someone's trying to find a shoe and, and it's uh, getting close and we got to go and we're going to be late. And my mom said, you know, why don't you just get up an hour early? I'm like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. You know, I work until sometimes 10 or 11 o'clock at night and then I'm, I get the kids stuff ready and then I go to bed and I get them up and I get them all. She said, just get up an hour earlier, Denise. She said, is it any easier? Like, is it easy when you get up at seven? And I said, not really. She said, well, then get up at six and just have an hour for yourself. And I was like, I really didn't believe it. And I started doing it. I thought, okay, I'm just going to try it. It is phenomenal what you can get done for yourself in an hour in the morning when there is nobody up who needs breakfast or shoes <laughs> or underwear. There's, it's amazing what you can get done when you're not looking at your email first. You're not looking at your phone first, but you're getting up and doing something for you. And that's something, again, someone asked, does it have to, it doesn't have to be yoga. It could be just get up, put your shoes on and go out the door and go for a walk. It could be get up and do some calisthenics on the floor. It could be get up and put on a piece of music in your headphones and dance your ass off for 15 or 20 minutes. I, there's just so many ways to get your body moving so that the whole day is different. If you spend a few minutes in the morning and you don't have to have, I took an hour because I felt like I needed that space at that time, but getting up 20 minutes before everybody else. The only thing is I'll tell you with, with 20 minutes, sometimes your kids get up early or your partner gets up early and then they want to infringe on that 20 minutes. <laughs> and that's not as much fun. So I always got up an hour early. So if the kids got up a little bit earlier or something, I really felt like I'd had my time that was for me. And one of the things that entrepreneurs can do too, this is a thing. Sometimes we stay up late at night and it's like, we know we need rest and we stay up late at night. It's like, it's like we're getting back at the world for not having any time for ourselves. And we stay up till two or three o'clock in the morning, binging on Netflix or doing something crazy like knitting or doing something like that has, like there is no reason to be up till two o'clock in the morning, but it's like almost like revenge playtime. And so if we don't structure it into our lives, we, we break out and we have to have it. It's, and I, we're human animals. We need to play. And if we don't make time to play, we will push out of that envelope in some way and, or the body breaks down. Hmm. Body, the, the, the mind, spirit, body, our psychological makeup. We are not designed to work all day, every day. And if we don't structurally take care of that, then we start to have health issues, right? Yeah. It's, it's, funny, you, it's funny you say that, Denise, because the early morning stuff, when I make myself get up early in the morning before anybody else is awake, it's my favorite time of day. But I feel very much like I, I live the life of an entrepreneur, even though I don't have a business anymore. I still stay up late and I'll do those things too. And exactly as you say, because I feel it's a form of, self-care for me too. Yeah. If there's not enough going on for you, it's like you want to listen to some music or a podcast or an innovation go up toolkit Tuesday that you didn't get to listen to because you didn't give yourself time to take care of that part of your business. Yeah. Right. You didn't I, I'm stay up like I'll it's like eleven forty five and my partner's like, aren't you coming to bed? And I'm like, no, I'm listening to this thing right now. Because, <laughs> and it's like this revenge thing that we do things that are not good for our health, which is stay up late and lose sleep. You don't get sleep back. You don't, if we, when we miss sleep, we don't get it back. So sometimes we have to, but just notice when we're doing it to ourselves uh -huh. and, and 
a, better to get sleep, get up in the morning, and we're fresher, we're sharper, and we're just more on the ball. And having good sleep hygiene at night is a great way to reduce stress, right? Having a, a routine. And it's not possible for every entrepreneur. Some people's business is a bar. You're going to be up late every night. My, my, my oldest is a full-time musician. Right? And, and so his life is all over the map. Right? And he has to find normalcy in that. And I would suggest that for every, every business is a little bit different, right? Sometimes your clients are in India while you're here. So you've got to be on two time zones, right? Time zones are, are tough so. for entrepreneurs too. Right? Wow. Well, sure. Thank you. No problem. Thank you for sticking around a little longer. Oh. Thank you to people in the audience who stuck around a little bit longer. Um, I appreciate uh, all of you. And, and thank Denise, you. thank you so much for sharing all of this today. It's an important topic. And I think you yeah, um, see if we can help. Yeah, it's amazing. Um, thank you. Have thank a great you. afternoon. You too. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody.